Wizard Create Attributes. There's a lot to say about these attributes. As you can see, we have seven kinds of attributes and this is a guide about all kinds of attributes structured after the attributes in that order here. So we're going to go over strength, intelligence, piety, vitality, dexterity, speed, senses. Uh, for which classes are they good? How good are they in general? Are there ones that you can maybe dump a little bit? And uh, what is good for which class? What unlocks which skills? We're going to have a deep look into that. So you can confidently choose the attributes you like for the characters you like. So first we're going to go for strength. Strength is deeply connected to yeah, fighters, something like that. You can see here that prototypical thing, you have a lizardman fighter with a lot of strength. Why is strength so good? As you can see here from the description, it affects any maneuver that requires physical strength from hitting creatures to the damage done, also cracking open doors and chests if needed. Strength also influences most weapon skills, carrying capacity and stamina. So it's a very, very physical skill. Strength also influences, as we've heard, the combat skills. So it's the combat skills learning tempo that will be affected by your strength. It's uh, incredibly useful to have a lot of strength for things like this, for example, close combat, and even more for the specialized skills. It will slightly increase the tempo here, even if it's not mentioned, but it will increase massively the tempo for the weapons that you can use here. As you can see, some weapons you can learn faster with a lot of strength, some not so much like the dagger. The dagger doesn't need much strength, but um, like the, the classic weapon, the best weapons in the game, like swords and pole arms, you have a big advantage if you have a lot of strength there. But that's not the only thing, right? So strength also increases your stamina. So your stamina are basically your spell points for melee action. So you can use the stamina as a bard, to play music as a gadgeteer to operate your gadgets and classically as a fighter or any kind of melee or ranged combatant to just make your action so a very high stamina is is really good for combat longevity because if, if you have low stamina um, things can happen that you don't hit as well things like that as you can see, a measurement of the character's endurance, the character's stamina is determined by its experience level, strength, vitality, and piety. It's, it's highly influenced by strength, if you can see. Here, if I change the strength roughly at, yeah, so you get roughly, roughly one stamina per, per strength, maybe a little, even a little bit more. And um, so that is, just a very good thing to increase your combat prowess and also your combat endurance. But there are other things to strength. You can see here a fully fully developed fighter that has 100 strength. And 100 strength is something really special. I mean, it gives you a certain skill. In that case, the skill of power strike. Its controlling attribute is strength. It means using any close combat weapon, the ability to strike a blow so hard that it has a greatly increased chance to hit and to penetrate. So very high level opponents have um, penetration protection through armor and other things. And if you have a lot of strength, then this penetrates that, which is a very, very big contribution to the damage. There are monsters that are really, really hard to give physical damage to. And this is the, the antidote to it, power strike. In the end, most of the characters that will have power strike will do the main amount of damage. That's not all there is to it. It's also important for ranged combat, even though it's often not marked that way. You can see that the bow, for example, the bow and also throwing and sling is affected by strength. Yes. Um, with these ranged weapons, not with modern weapons, the damage you cause is influenced by strength. The more strength you have,
the higher the damage that you do with bows or with throwing weapons and slings. So it's really advantageous also for things like a ranger or um, yeah, anyone that uses throwing and sling, for example, a ninja to have high strength. Not only for the closed combat weapons, but also for the ranged combat weapons, as it increases the damage. So there's that. We were sp speaking about stamina, and you might wonder, like, if you if I increase strength later, will I get the same amount of stamina as if, like, I would increase strength at the start? You can increase strength later, and it will make no difference. Yeah, the strength stamina thing is calculated like. Um, number of levels and stamina. It's not like you get X points of stamina per level. It's just a calculation of what your strength is and what your level is and what your class is. So it's not like uh, you're missing out on levels. If you increase strength later, you will have less stamina total. No, if you have a given strength at a given level with a given class, then you'll have the same amount of stamina as someone with the same attributes, regardless how their path there was. So um, you can increase strength early. There's a lot of advantages to that. You can also increase it later. The stamina points will get added retroactively. So what is strength for? It's essential, as we've seen, for melee characters and melee hybrids, like what would that be? Fighter, Lord, Valkyrie, all need super strength. Samurai, very good to have strength. Ninja, Monk, Rogue, even Bard, for various reasons, very good to have strength. And then also the Ranger, a throwing ninja. Um, one can even make a case for the gadget here, but it's not needed. Strength is not needed for him. Bard, it's needed for like combat damage for... Uh, potential range damage, force stamina, has a lot of advantages. So um, all this upper thing here is positively affected by strength, maybe a little bit except the gadget here, even though some gadgets are very um, hard to carry. So it also increases carrying capacity. So it, strength is also from that is, is, is a necessity to have a certain amount of strength if you have, if you want to wear heavy, heavy armor. That's definitely something that you should consider. Mm. While the lower amount of the lower classes here, like priest, alchemist, bishop, psionic mage, don't really profit from that. You can make a melee priest, of course, then you need strength. But alchemist, bishop, psionic mage, just forget it. They just don't. You don't need strength for that. They don't have usually very mm, very hard to carry equipment. Even though you can also make a melee bishop, you can make... That's the great thing about Wizardry 8. You can make anything work with the right attributes and equipment. But that doesn't mean, like, especially if you're a beginner, that you should try to do that. <laughs> it's way easier to have a strong lord, a strong fighter, a strong valkyrie, even a strong ranger. Um, samurai, ninja, monk, rogue, um, and also bard. These are the classes, I would say, Take some strength. It it will be good for you. It will be good for you. It's unimportant for casters. So let's get to the next attribute. For that, we're choosing uh, something completely different from this list. For example, a mage. A mage is like the prime candidate for something like intelligence. We're talking about intelligence here. Affects a character's performance in mental tasks such as music, artifacts, engineering, communication, close and ranged combat, mythology, all forms and schools of magic except divinity and a character skill with locks and traps. So um, that gives you the impression that intelligence is important for all the people, but that is not the case. Um, it's, it's so that intelligence is mainly there I mean, of course, a minimum amount of intelligence is helpful for, for all the classes. But the real benefit of intelligence is unlocking power cast, which has the same effect that we have spoken about before with power strike. 
in higher levels, you have opponents that have a very high resistance to spells and you need spell penetration to get, get through to them better. So to make more damage, to have better effects on them, to have a higher chance to aff affect them with a spell. And for that, you need intelligence. So intelligence increases the power of your spells, mainly through the power cast spell later on. It's also It will also help learning all kinds of skills. And especially if you're a um, beginner, then having someone good with mythology that gives you info about monsters or artifacts that helps identify uh, unknown objects can help but it's really not something that you need so even like you you meant you see that there's music mentioned here so music is the main thing for the bard next to communication but really, I would not recommend increasing your intelligence as a bard for the sake of increasing music, because you get no skill for it uh, that will help your music skills. You'll get instruments that mimic some spells, but if you get power cast, that will not affect this, these musical skills. So dumping too much into it is it's basically a dump. So intelligence is a dump stat for a lot of characters but not not for characters that want to cast offensively that want to affect opponents with spells so that's the that's the reason to take intelligence the reason to take intelligence is to wanting to harm opponents with spell speed with debuff speed with uh, kill effect speed with um, hit point damage right main thing is hit point damage because in higher levels Really, the, even if you have higher power cast, opponents will very often resist your spells. So, going for spells, especially on, on Expert, the highest difficulty level, is something risky. So, you should only go for 100 Intelligence, really, with, with these classes, like Alchemist, Bishop, Psionic, and Mage, and maybe Priest, if you want to use the, the spells of the priest offensively. Of course, you can also make like casting hybrids, but it, if you want to affect um, opponents with their spells offensively, you can try that. I would still think it's risky. I mostly use the hybrids spells like to heal the party, to buff the party, to have irresistible spells like armor melt that will give the opponents like an, a negative modifier to, to armor penetration, things like that. So not really offensive spells. I, I really rarely use these, especially especially with the hybrids. Hybrids are um, ones that can use magic also. Like that would be the Lord, Valkyrie, Ranger, Samurai, Ninja, Monk. For example, the gadget here doesn't really profit from high intelligence learns the skills a little bit faster don't get me wrong but using the gadgets it doesn't give him any kind of spell penetration or something to work with it doesn't make uh, using them stronger it it isn't just a big help um, it's better to invest in into intelligence massively only if you want to cast offensive spells So, intelligence is also, of course, truly wasted with with rogue and fighter. It's uh, they don't even have spell points. They don't even use spells. So, um, really, just even if the intelligence is low, your skills will will come with use. Your skills will come will come with use. If you have a certain amount of intelligence, of course, you can give them an item that increases their intelligence a bit for skill learning. But I wouldn't invest points into it because unlocking uh, the, the final skills like Power Strike is way more important for your character than having a little bit of, of higher speed in skill learning. So, intelligence is for offensive casters.
piety. Piety. That sounds as if, if it is connected to priests. And it, it really is. As you can see, it affects a character's magic realm skills and heavily influences divinity. So it helps with realm skill learning and especially with a divinity school. Piety also affects the amount of spell power a character gets when he gains levels as well as a character's overall stamina. So it's very useful for defensive minded casters. And also it gives you at the maximum it unlocks the skill Iron Will, which gives you extra resistances and extra chances to resist enemy spells. So, for a healer or a buffer, it is a very, very good thing to have some piety. It will increase. You can see we have the spell points here. And if we change the piety, the spell points go up a bit. Now, if you have very high piety, you'll have a very, very high amount of spell points later on. So. You basically have have someone who can cast anything at any strength throughout the whole combat if you specialize in piety and to combine with a high level and maybe something like uh, a class like bishop psionic mage or that it will be very good it can be very good combined with offensive casters like something like mage or an offensive minded bishop but you have the true strength of it, which is why I consider it like it's for the offensive caster, it's more like a third attribute. So what to develop in a in an offensive caster's first intelligence and then speed to be able to quickly act with offensive spells, and later on you add some some spell points and maybe iron will that is added by piety and you can also add vitality that is also of course more hit points are also always helpful but piety helps so much with the resistances that is it's really something to consider if you want to have the helpful character for example the priest is made for that um, the bishop can be made defensively and it's also useful, it can also be useful for Valkyrie and Lord, even though I personally wouldn't invest in it um, because melee strength is something so good. So I mainly invest in the melee attributes of Lords and Valkyries, but you can certainly go for a, like a, a little bit of combat, combat minded defensive healer because these will get a lot of, a lot more hit points along the way just from their class so you can make them basically your really really strong and tough healer but piety use it mostly for for like priest priest bishop maybe alchemist uh, and if you want so you can use it for lord and valkyrie because they are heavily dependent on divinity too the real strength of piety lies in its defense. It also increases stamina, but really don't don't take piety to increase stamina. That's a waste. That's really a waste. It's very good for defensive castles and buffers. Priest, b defensive bishop, maybe Valkyrie and Lord. It's useful for all casters later on to have more spell points as a third attribute after in intelligence and speed. And to eventually get Iron Will, which is really nice to have. It's just something that helps you a lot to resist opponent's spells. That can be devastating later on. And of course, who do you want to not be affected by a spell? Of course, the one that saves your butts, like that's the healer. The healer. But it's useless for for classes like uh, Fighter, Rogue, Bard, Gadgeteer, and essentially also for, for Ranger. Uh, ninja monk and samurai i wouldn't really recommend using piety it's you have just better better attributes to invest in so that's piety for you and it's connected power skill of iron will that can be really really useful especially as i said defensive casters buffers healers Now let's come to vitality. Vitality can be a vital skill. It's it's a it's a, always a viable 
third skill after you've got your offensive skills um, covered. It affects the amount of hit points, stamina and carrying capacity a character receives as well as the likelihood of succumbing to a disease. So we're going to talk about um, who is Vitality good for and what does it unlock? Vitality at, at the very high level of 100, it unlocks Iron Skin, which strongly decreases the damage you receive from physical attacks like melee attacks and ranged attacks. So it's very good if you ha if you want to have that super tank at, at, the, f at the front of the formation. Uh, base, give, give him vitality, it's good. But it's also good for other characters. Like, it's surprisingly not as good for fighters. Just in case, if you want to make that super tank, it's also good for fighters. But um, fighters get so many hit points anyway, right? Um, you don't really need it with them. It's it's just it's over the top. As you can see, if I increase that, it it heavily affects, for example, stamina and carrying capacity. So in in some amount, it's it's really good for everyone. Um, also, if we look closely, hit points add up rather slow, and especially over the levels, you get a great amount of hit points from vitality. So that makes it a good choice for like anyone as as a third. As a third attribute to invest in just because it gives you that little bit of security that makes you survive it's just a good attribute but very often not good enough to invest in if you want a, a quicker playthrough but you can also make it as like as a second attribute like you could make a fighter based on strength and vitality no problem that guy at level 10 or 20 will probably never die um, Vitality protects you also a little bit from th things like death effects, not uh, only the likelihood of succumbing to disease. So um, even though resistances play a huge role, so if you take a lizard man and have that and have a death effect, bam, the lizard man is dead. Still, Vitality protects a lot from these things. So Vitality is a protection skill, but it doesn't really help the party. It helps only the character to survive. Um, the thing with vitality is like if you're if you're keen on the stamina, um, it's it doesn't really matter if you increase vitality later or earlier. You will always have the same amount of stamina with the same amount of vitality at the same level. So it doesn't doesn't matter if you take it early on or later on. It will it's just a calculation of later, not like you get X points of stamina per level. It's um, it's a dynamic calculation if you want so. So what is whom is who's vitality useful? It's I've said it already. It's useful for frontline tanks or half tanks, even though everyone can profit from a higher amount of hit points and the capability to resist some damage. You can use it as a third attribute, for example, in defensive casters. There, it's very useful after piety and speed. Like a, for example, if you have a if you have a priest, like a whatever, yeah, fairies are a special case. Fairies are, um, for example, if you, if you have the prototypical rabble priest and you have maxed out your your piety here and your your speed, so you can quickly act with um, with good helpful spells, then you could go for vitality to um, to further increase just the security you have that that your sturdy buffer and defender of the party will be there even though vitality doesn't have a big if a bigger effect on on hit points with classes like priest alchemist bishop psionic mage it can still be useful to have that like vitality's influence on hit points is higher with these classes fighter lord valkyrie ranger like the sturdy classes get a lot more hit points also from vitality and um so if you want really a tank character there, then do it. But it's like the survivability influence is really good, even with the casters, which is why it's good also in offensive casters. If you have, for example, uh, let's say you have a, a an elf, an elf mage or something like that. And after you've finished with intelligence and speed, and you have a comfortable amount of, of spell points, then you can definitely add some vitality. As you can see, very often the the races that are used for offensive casters have very low vitality. So uh, my recommendation is to increase it like to something like 50. It will really help out 
a lot to have that little bit more of hit points, especially later on when you have um, attacks from from range that can really, really, really affect um, that can really affect your your characters. It's it's really it's so good to have these little points anymore. So it's it's good for a third, for a fourth attribute. And in characters like, for example, the Bard, it can be really useful. It's it's a standard build, at least for me, to to have something like strength and vitality for the Bard, because the Bard profits so much from stamina and like from from staying power with his instruments that you mainly use as a buffer a healer but also sometimes especially at the start as an offensive thing and you use the stamina points for casting so you can do a lot more casting with more vitality with a bard and uh, that's just that's just great because you then learn the skills better and of course you are much more powerful if you can use the instruments m way more often. So Bard and also Gadgeteer profit a lot from Vitality, also because the carrying capacity is increased by that. And the extra protection really doesn't hurt with like your Jack of all trade classes like Bard and also to a, to a point Gadgeteer. That's just a big help to have a lot of vitality. And even if you go for for a gadget here that is specialized on ranged attacks, vitality then helps a lot if you have like dexterity, senses, speed, very high. Then you will use up a lot of stamina with your ranged attacks. And with that, vitality helps as well. So, dexterity. Dexterity is a, is a very, very, very important attribute for all, uh, all non-casters. Like everyone who is not casting like as a main gig needs dexterity. That's my opinion to dexterity. So dexterity affects the chance to hit and to penetrate with physical attacks, the number of physical attacks in combat, and all weapon skills. It also affects skills which rely on the body, such as locks and traps, stealth, pickpocket, and music. It also affects the chance to hit and to penetrate with ranged attacks. So, if you shoot an arrow, um, that also there's also dexterity that helps with that, and. Of course, I think all weapon skills are connected to dexterity. Dexterity is just its just the main thing. If you want to do physical damage, uh, and range damage also counts as physical damage, you need dexterity. So for everyone except, um, except priest, alchemist, bishop, psionic mage, dexterity is, is, something, uh, is something to think about. You need, you need dexterity. It's as simple as that. And if you have 100 dexterity, it unlocks a skill that increases your armor class. So um, it's it's good. It's it's a good skill to add up, and it's something that's mostly helpful then for something like fighter. So if you have a fighter, dexterity is extra important because it's it's such a big influence also on survivability in the later game if you have really really big opponents that hit you like trucks with 80 damage or something like that then you're happy to have more armor class so these attacks don't do that much damage and of course it helps with all the with all the skills to learn that's not that important as long as, long as you use them you will always have enough uh, skill points and if, if you invest in them so strength and dexterity is like the, the standard thing to take uh, for a lot of characters like strength of course it's a no-brainer dexterity is also the no-brainer if you go for i'd say fighter lord valkyrie samurai ninja monk rogue and also depending on how you build Bard and Gadgeteer. So it's it's really a, a really, really critical skill. 
Um, the reflection skill later on helps the influence on stealth. That also increases your armor class and that helps you not to get hit also helps. So it's, it's just something extremely good. And if you go for like a ranged based character, it's also the second to use. Like, so for a melee based character, you go strength and dexterity. For a range based character, like for example, the gadget here, uh, you start with dexterity and senses because you want to unlock eagle eye for range penetration. And you, of course, dexterity also helps with range penetration and to hit. So dexterity is absolutely critical. Then you have um, classes like the ranger that can also start with dexterity and senses, but also can choose to start with dexterity and strength or uh, can start with strength and senses but dexterity is always at least the third skill uh, the third attribute that you take for that dexterity is extremely important but if you have characters that want to like exclusively cast cast spells like priest alchemist bishop psionic mage are prime examples for that you probably don't want to cast all the time with the other with the others um, then it's you can you can just scrap it it's a dump stat you can absolutely ignore dexterity there because you don't want to hit with physical or ranged weapons it's just a it's just a very very side gig you want to use your spells and for that you do not need dexterity it doesn't add to the initiative so you can't go earlier in a round with that it doesn't add with add some penetration or something like that even though it's like kind of recommended on alchemist it really doesn't help the alchemist much it's just it's not it helps with learning alchemy surprisingly so you will learn alchemy quicker if you have dexterity but learning alchemy can be done much better with spells so really please um Ignore it on casters. Uh, we're gonna just take that here and I'll show you the thing. It is really affected by dexterity and intelligence, so um, it helps with learning that, but don't don't invest in it. It's it's a really really good thing to invest in with something like yeah, fighter is the prime example. You invest in dexterity as much as you can. You invest in strength as much as you can. And then you can choose if you invest in maybe vitality, even though there's a lot to be had, or in speed maybe, or in senses if you want uh, ranged weapons as your side gig, so to say. But like it's it's basically the triumvirate. You you can go um, strength, dexterity, vitality on a fighter, a melee based fighter. You can go strength dexterity speed on a melee based fighter but dexterity is always in the first two attributes for be it a ranged uh, based char damage character or a melee based character dexterity is something you need it's it's really good now speed Speed is useful for a lot of things. The main thing of them is initiative, but it can also, as you can see here, number of swings per attack and the number of attacks per turn. Speed also influences some combat skills. At very high or very low level, speed can also affect a character's armor class. So speed is all around useful, but what are the main uses for skills? It's not essential, surprisingly, for for melee or ranged characters because dexterity and the skills already give you enough attacks and are also a little bit more important than speed but there are some cases where it's really important for example if you have a samurai if you have a samurai you have the ability of lightning strike that gives you a huge amount of attacks uh, suddenly and that is also triggered by the amount of speed you have so there it is important if you have enough like stamina for example from strength then having some speed as a samurai is really good it's basically the lightning strike it's it's the coolest thing where you where you use speed 
Now, speed is a good secondary attribute for defensive casters. Like if you have a priest um, there, let's take some whatever, a dwarven priest, for example, you can see that the speed is very low. Dwarf is a very good defensive character, has a lot of piety, but you want to increase speed. So you, you build for a priest or a defensive caster in general that, that needs, for example, a bishop too, or, or you might use a, a Valkyrie, is to increase piety for spell points, for the divinity that helps out with healing, curing, protecting, and then you want speed because you want to be the first in the round to cast your spell, the first to cast the protection, the first um, to heal, the first to do something. It's just really helpful to have that speed. So if you have a defensive caster, speed is a good secondary attribute after, for example, in that case, piety. And um, the same is true for the other side. For example, let's say you have like an elf mage, that can cast something really devastating, but if he's not, if he's not casting it in the like before the opponents can cast anything, it might not even come to fruition. So the the mage might be even seeing like mages have very low hit points. So the mage might be dead. Even in the worst case, might be dead or might be like affected by some status effect and cannot cast that round before the mage can cast the spell. So what is the standard build really for offensive casters that rely on that, that really that big thing to cast before anyone else? It's definitely intelligence and speed. So it's it's something you want to be, uh, you want to do your spell before all the others can do them. Be it a buff, a protection, uh, or be it a heal, or be it something offensive that will knock out a lot of opponents with a status effect. So, speed is primarily useful on casters to get access to the first action in combat. And the first action in combat often counts a lot by protecting the party, knocking out the opponents out early. Later on, if you want to use melee on on melee or ranged characters as a fourth or fifth attribute, it's really okay to use that. Um, for example, there's there's also other examples. You can use a gadget here that usually uses uh, modern weapons to um, destroy opponents apart from the gadgets. And there, it's also really useful to have speed, but later on. First, you take some dexterity, you take some senses, and if you have these nuts and bolts fixed, then you can go for speed for even more attacks. But even though you would like to balance it out with vitality. So with speed, if you have 100 speed, it's not really easy to get 100 speed, but 100 speed is definitely reachable. If you have 100 speed, uh, let's, take, let's take the example where it's probably most useful. That is if you have a samurai with 100 speed. That is really, really cool because then you get access to snake speed that give, give, gives you even more initiative. You, so you're, you're first on there and you can have a lot of attacks early on. And it's even better, of course, with the casters. So if you have a priest with snake speed, uh, the priest will be like the first one to do anything if the priest has a lot of snake speed, it, it's no doubt that the priest will be the first one to cast. And to have a guarantee like that, that speed gives you over the top speed uh, with a high initiative, is just very, very useful. So in that case, speed as a secondary attribute is really, really, really important and is really, really helpful. So speed, surprisingly, is very, very good for casters and it can be useful also for all the other characters, but mainly the thing is to get access to that first round in combat where you can decide a combat and to decide how it goes. That's speed for you. Then we come to our senses. <laughs> it affects anything which relies upon a character's senses, such as initiative, but not as much as speed. Sighting monsters, finding hidden items, secrets, scouting, mythology, sonics, artifacts. Senses also affects some combat skills, 
such as close combat, critical strike and dual weapons. But it's by no means critical out of ranged combat because it at high levels unlocks the so-called eagle eye, which gives you ranged penetration. At higher levels, it's really hard to affect uh, some kinds of monsters with your ranged weaponry. And for that, you need 100 senses and eagle eye. So that's the main use of senses. If you want a really, really speedy defensive character, you can also take it as a, like a third attribute to even increase your speed to, to absolutely super guarantee that first round. But it's mostly not needed because you get access to snake speed with very high speed. So um, for whom is Senses? Senses is for the ranger where you want to use him as a primarily ranged character or as a mostly ranged character paired with dexterity. It's useful for the Gadgeteer, of course. The Gadgeteer can mostly ignore strength, and so Dexterity, Senses, and then even Speed are the ones to uh, make it count for, for his super weapon that he can use with a modern weapon. So modern weapon also isn't affected by strength, so that makes Senses like the perfect second pick um, to, to use with that. So it will, it will do a lot of damage if you have access then to Eagle Eye, it's just extremely useful to have and it will increase your initiative on top of that. So if you want a quick ranged character or also ranged character, you can use it. What's the other use of senses? Like if you're sure you can reach 100 senses, you can build a fighter like with, with strength, dexterity and then senses. So you can use a fighter with the normal melee weapons, which is the main strength of the fighter, but then Due to the fighter getting a lot of stamina, it can also be good to give him some kind of ranged weapon and train that too. The strength, the dexterity already help with the damage from the ranged weapon, like not with a modern weapon, but with bows on throwing and slings. And having sense is an eagle eye on top of that will give you a very, very mean killing machine. It's it's really good. You can uh, you can definitely use that. It's it's some kind of it feels a little bit different to like normal characters, so to say, but it's basically a fighter with two gigs. Like the fighter can use the melee weapons, and if they're not cursed, can use, in case they need them, the ranged weapons with very, very high effectiveness. So that's the other use of senses out of, uh, of the ranged classes of maybe a throwing ninja, gadgeteer, or ranger. Just use either the the hybrids or just straight out rogue or fighter um, as a secondary ranged character. It can be really effective to do that, especially, or rather we have to say mainly if you reach Eagle Eye skill over the course of the game. Otherwise, I wouldn't really invest in it. Rather take, take speed or some extra hit points from vitality, things like that, things like that. So to sum it up, Senses is a, is a very cool attribute for ranged characters. In some cases, also for other characters, but use it with ranged. It's made for ranged.